Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2022 with Dover Athletic and I know it has been a few days since the last episode and quite a few things have happened in that time. A lot of Premier League matches have been cancelled, there's been a new Football Manager update as well and I've become a dad, that's why there's been a big break. So, where are we then? Because I literally haven't played the game for going on maybe 8-9 days, something along those lines. I don't really know what's going on, so I need to kind of give myself a quick refresher. Last episode, I'm pretty sure we did Wickham, and I want to say Harrogate, I think? Was it Harrogate? Maybe it wasn't Harrogate at all. I'm pretty sure we did Wickham in the last episode. So today we're going to be doing Middlesbrough. We're going to also do Bromley. I probably said we're going to do something completely different, but that's what we're going to go for. We've kind of done okay by the looks of it, in between episodes. Where you've drawn with Southend, drawn with Salah Moore, drawn with Weymouth, beat Port Vale and beat Stevenage. So, we are still up the right end of the table, currently sat fourth place. We have made a signing as well. I checked this before I hit record. Another central midfielder has joined the ranks on a non-contract basis. Jack Hinshelwood has signed from Brighton. He's very good mentally, very good, or not very good, reasonably physically. Uh, technically, he's lots of sevens and eights, really, but he's, he's probably not going to play a lot. He's there for depth. That's why we've got him. Let's play Middlesbrough and try and get ourselves into the FA Cup fourth round. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I remember now. All of our players are basically giving up playing football for the moment. I mean, we're in January. We've gone past the Christmas period. So, uh, yeah, let me uh, let me fix this. So, not a huge amount of changes. We are still playing two players who probably shouldn't be playing. It's going to be Fryer in goal. Payne or Pambu and Ralph at the back. Craig, Brown and Malone in midfield. Harvey Woods comes in on the right-hand side for Don Ballard. Jack Spong on the left-hand side. And Rob Street will be our main goal threat for this one. It's a 4-3-3. I don't remember whether this is what we've been playing. I think it is. I'm not expecting Zach Orr to score as many goals now because of obviously the update that took place which apparently nerfed corners to the front post. We're going to keep going to see if they actually do anything different. So, one good thing that is actually on our side for this Middlesbrough match, they are not doing very well. They're a championship side down the wrong end of the table. So, they are, they're on such poor form. Such poor form. We are obviously on a reasonable run of form. There is a slim chance that we might be able to beat them here. I'm not expecting too much because, uh, let's face it, they're about four leagues ahead of us. We are holding on at the moment, and by holding on, we've had four shots. No highlights, no shots on target, but we are getting there. We've got ourselves a corner, apparently. We're not seeing any highlights. What's going on? Now we're seeing a highlight. It's taken 42 minutes to get there, and unfortunately for us, we've thrown it straight to a middle for a shirt. Ariola finds Frabotta on that left-hand side. I don't know whether they're going full strength, playing some uh, youngsters. Adrian Grubick, maybe, has made it 1-0 to Middlesbrough. I mean, we were optimistic if we were going to try and get anything out of this. We're going to keep going. We're not playing terrible. Zach Orr, despite the update, he's still playing really well on a 7.1, 7.0. Half-time then at the Riverside. I would like to know, can we see how many people are in attendance? Is this a thing we can find out? Because obviously, being the FA Cup... This is our way to get money. This should be a decent enough, decent enough windfall for us. I'm not expecting huge money. We're not expecting millions of pounds. If it was somebody like a United, somebody like that, where they'll sell maybe 20,000 tickets, we'll pick up a lot of cash. Middlesbrough have probably sold 9,000, 9,401. It's a reasonable number. Nothing is really happening, is it? Go nothing's going our way. We are playing pretty poor in midfield. Jack Turner's going to come on for Zach Brown. Do we do... Jordan McInef. I don't know where he should play. I think a winger, but he can also play in the middle as a ball-winning midfielder or as a pressing forward. He's a bit of a strange man, isn't he? Um, why? Why? No, right. Let's let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Actually, do let's do Harvey Woods. Let's put him on the right-hand side. Keep Rob Street on. We've got one more change to do. I don't want to bring Jack Hinchelwood on, although Daniel Malone isn't doing so well. So maybe we'll do that as well. We'll do. We'll give Hinshaw his debut. No, we won't. Why did I even put him on the bench? We'll just do those two. Match stats-wise, we're actually not doing bad, are we? Six shots, zero on target. Let's ignore that number. But we are getting chances. We've got to throw in a pretty good position. Craig, back to Malone. Ralph crosses the ball in. Back post is Rob Street. It goes just over the bar. First real chance that went our way. It's taken a long time to get there. Didn't even count as a shot. Oh, no, apparently it did about five minutes later. Into injury time there, not a lot we can really do. I think we got outdone by fitness. We got outdone by basically playing against a championship side. Second half, 
they uh, they just kind of picked it up a bit, didn't they? We didn't do anything in the second half. We should have scored a goal in the first half when we had a reasonable amount of possession. In fact, we had more possession and we still lost. That's annoying. Right, now the interesting thing is what do we pick up financially? We are going to obviously be told, yeah, we've lost and all this lot. Uh, Philip Koku's been sacked. Um, why, am I, why am I being told this? Are you expecting me to go for the uh, Philip Koku, or the Reading job? The Philip Koku job. Um, I, I don't want it. What do we get financially? We've got 37k in the bank. Hold on. 149,000. 150k we got from gate receipts in January alone. Probably 125k of that, I reckon, was that one match alone. That's very, very good. Right, we're now going to go forward to the final match, I think, in uh, January it is. It's going to be at home against Bromley. Have we already played them once a season? Yes, we have. It was a 1-1 draw. Zach Orr scored. Let's hope we can get back to winning ways. See you in a second. Match number two of the episode then at home against Bromley. It is the 27th of January now. So we have had a massive, massive break since the Middlesbrough defeat. And it means a lot of our players are now match fit again, which is absolutely perfect. The only player who is kind of missing is Dom Ballard. I don't want to play him just yet. We are going to stick with the 4-3-3 formation. Fryer in goal, Payne or Pambu and Tyler Garrett in defence. Craig Brown and Ryan Chavez Munoz in midfield. Mukanev, Spong and Street as our strikers. Wakely, Bramble, Malone, Woods and Williams as our substitutes. We should be beating Bromley at home, a team who I think are down in 17th place. We are still up in 4th place in the table. A lot of matches have been going on around us. So in the, the time, basically, when we played Middlesbrough, there were some league games going on. There were some league games going on between then and now as well. We haven't moved at all. We are well clear, actually, of eighth place. Uh, who is that? South Shields, I think. So what was that? Seven points clear of outside of the playoffs. We are seven points behind top of the table as well. We are more likely to go down than we are up, I think. Spong with a corner. Here we go. Near post corner. Is it going to work? Leon Pambu's there. Bryn with the save. So he's still good enough to get on the end of it. Pambu is a big lad. He's a very big lad. So Fedel Ross Lang's got the ball there. McKnight on the right hand side. Ross Lang, by the way, player who I tried to sign in the summer on a free and he decided to go to Bromley. The cross comes in. Ross Lang is there. How have we not got the ball clear? The two former Southampton men kicking the ball between them and it's fallen to our goalkeeper. I think we kind of got lucky there. Half time, not a lot going on. Not a lot at all. Um, they've apparently had three, two shots in that space of time. We've had nine, three on target, but they should have scored their chance. We really shouldn't. Or we haven't basically had any good chances. Um, I need you to... Start, no, we need to just do that. Ability to make the difference. It's the one that always seems to work. And by always seems to work, it might work. Sometimes it doesn't. Shipley with a free kick for Bromley. It's almost found its way in. Chavez Munoz with a very calm pass back to the goalkeeper who was on the floor. Rob Street's trying to get past Howe. Can't manage it. It's gone off for a throw. 60 minutes played. We haven't done anything really, have we? We had one chance early on. Looking at their match ratings, they're doing all right. We are down here. Tyler Garrett is struggling. We're going to take Garrett off. No, we're not. I didn't sort myself out to have a left back. We do have a right back. I mean, I, we're just going to have to keep Garrett on, I think. Uh, Chavez Munoz not doing so well, so we'll bring on Malone. Rob Street's coming off for Jaden Williams. We need to find ourselves a goal. This is a must-win game. It's not a must-win. What am I on about? It's a very winnable game. If we win, we're going to keep ourselves up with the top teams. If we lose, we have a slight risk of basically dropping down. Bingham with a corner for Bromley. Everything's going to be Bromley, isn't it? Jordan Shipley's there. It's 1-0 to Bromley. We have been the better side in terms of match stats. In terms of highlights, we've had one. They've had three and taken the lead. I don't like this new update. This new update seems to have broken my team. I mean, defensively, we're doing okay. We've got Pambu on a 7-2. We've got Zaka on a 7.0. We lose the match 1-0. We had 10 shots, three on target, one highlight. What is that performance, lads? We weren't good enough. Thrash arms. Um, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Everyone listened, apart from Pambu, which is fair. You did all right. Because that match was probably very, very short, we are going to go into a third match of this episode. It's going to be Kings Lynn, a team who are bottom of the table. We really should be winning this one. We beat them 3-0 earlier on in the season. Match number three, Kings Lynn away from home. Bottom of the table, Kings Lynn should be a nice, easy victory. We have gone for a few changes. We are sticking with the 4-3-3. However, I've gone for an advanced playmaker on attack and a Mazala on support. I think that's what we had, but the other way round and one wasn't on attack. 
as I've just kind of tweaked things a little bit. It's going to be Fryer in goal, Payne, Wakeley, Pambu and Ralph in defence. Zach or as a halfback. It's going to be Zach Brown and Michael Craig, Matthew Craig. Matthew's his name. Go, go away. There we go. Matthew Craig is going to be the advanced playmaker. It's going to be McInef, Spong and Williams rounding out our squad. I've dropped Rob Street because he is rubbish at the moment. He hasn't played well for the last four games. So, uh, yeah, hopefully Williams can get some goals to his name. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but we, we have we have a tunnel interview. I feel like I don't attend these. Um, OK, apparently we're going to do one of these. I know why we had to do one of those. We're on TV. We've actually got a TV match and somehow I've managed to pick it to show in an episode. So we're getting the fancy TV intro. Kings Lynn then at home, Dover away. Who are we? We are wearing the white. That's what we're wearing. Not who are we. I know who we are. We've dropped down to fifth place. A victory here isn't going to mean a huge amount really, is it? But it's going to push us slightly further away from that eighth place where we don't want to be finishing straight away as well. We are kicking off with the first highlight of the match. Burgess down that left-hand side. Denton's controlled it forward to Starbuck, across to Sam Bellis. Now Denton, once again, another former Southampton player is Sam Bellis. Davies to Bellis once again, goes for a long-range chance, curls it in the top corner. Of course he does. They haven't won a game in five, and Sam Bellis has scored an absolute screamer after 22 seconds. I haven't recorded a video for nearly two weeks, and this is the first one we're going to get. We have lost to Middlesbrough, we've lost to Bromley, we're 1-0 down as well against Kings Lynn. Bottom of the table, Kings Lynn. Hold on, Williams is going to get on the end of that. Yes, he does. Can the former Spurs man get himself a goal? No, he can't, because he's got no confidence. It's straight into the keeper. Still 1-0 to Kings Lynn. Corner for McInerney to take it towards the front post. It's Wakeley, and Jack Wakeley is there. Heads it in off the underside of the bar near post corners. I think still kind of work. Maybe not as well as they were, but we've definitely scored a goal from one. Ralph with a throw for us 16 minutes. Lots going on in this match. So all of a sudden, this episode's gone from being about eight minutes with two matches to probably 45 minutes with three matches. A Josie's controlled it for Kings Lynn. Forward to Sam Bellis. Is he going to score another scream at Starbuck? To Denton on the left. It's a good slide from Payne, but it's back to Denton. Crosses in. Davies is there. It's a good save from Fry. It's a, quite an acrobatic effort from Davies. McInef with the ball, finds Zach Brown, playing kind of out of position, but also not because he's very good at football. Spong on the left-hand side, crosses it in, back post is McInef. It's straight into the hands of the keeper. His second chance goes wide of the post. It is still 1-1, but we are looking much better now. Ralph's throw finds Spong. Ralph needs to get up there. He's taking his time, does get the ball back. Ralph would probably need to give a permanent contract because he's still only on a non-contract basis. Zach Brown's in there with the ball in the penalty area, crosses in. It's Matthew Craig. It might be Michael. I've already forgotten his name. He heads over the bar. Still 1-1. And it stays 1-1 going into the break. It's been even. It's been very even. And I'm worried. I'm worried that the, uh, the game engine update where they've done some changes has kind of broken our form a little bit. I'm kind of worried. I mean, that was a good team talk. Let's just walk away and go straight into the second half. Hopefully, we can get ourselves a second goal and ideally a winning goal. Starbuck down that left-hand side. We're going to get there first. It's the goal scorer, Wakely, with it. Into Zach Orr, playing as a halfback. Not doing particularly well on a 6-8. He's doing all right, isn't he? He's not doing as good as he normally would as a centre-back. Bellis has controlled it again, and Bellis has scored another screamer. Really? That's his sixth goal of the season, by the way. Two of them have been worldies in this match. They have an XG of 0.75 and have scored twice. We have an XG of 0.135, now 1.6, and we've scored once. Right, time to do some changes. We are going to do a little bit of rejigging, I think, in our team. Leon Pambu, unfortunately, is going to be the man's sacrifice. Malone is going to come on, and I think we'd also do Rob Street as well. I think we'll go for that. Let's give them a team talk. Can I just say to Rob Street, pump fist... You have the ability to make the difference. And then Daniel Malone, I mean, I won't pump my fist to you. I'll just say it. Denton with a throw. I don't even know whether our subs have taken place. It looks like they have. So Malone and Street are on. Kings Lynn with the ball. Boateng to Wells. It's going to go all the way back. No, it doesn't go back to the keeper. Denton long ball forward. Bellis now on a hat trick. We need to be getting there first. And Wakeley is the man to get there first. Craig to Brown. In the middle is Malone. Loads of space and loads of time. Finds Jack Spong. Down that left, lovely pass, finds Ralph, loads and loads of space for the fullback. Two, maybe three in the box, crosses the ball in, McInerney is there, and there it is, Jordan McInerney with his first goal for the club as well. 65 minutes on the clock, it's 2-2, two, two. 
We are celebrating like we've taken the lead there, lads. And shortly afterwards, we've got ourselves... Okay, they've got a highlight. We've got a highlight. Not even sure whose highlight this is now. Wakeley's going to go for a lovely run full by the ball. He's a big lad, isn't he? I didn't know how big Wakely is, but he looks massive. Pain to Zach Brown. Crosses the in. Spong's at the back post. Spong, with a headed effort, goes over the bar. Jack Spong isn't a big lad and somehow managed to win a header. One more goal. One more goal. It's all we need. And then we're going to pick up three points in this episode. And that I'll be a little bit happier. Final change has taken place. TJ Bramble's going to come on. It's not obviously an attacking change. We will go attacking as well, I think. And can we up the tempo? Let's up the tempo a little bit. See whether that makes a difference. I feel like it probably won't. Yeah, it didn't. Or did it? Hold on. We've got a corner. Spong's going to take it. Two minutes left of injury time. We are over the 90. Spong's taking his time. Front post. It's going to be Wakely. It's not managed to find its way towards goal. Malone back to Spong. Still all the white shirts in the middle. Street is there. Unmarked. He was offside, but he was unmarked. And kicks it straight at the goalkeeper. It was easier to score, mate. It's Newton with the ball for Kings Lynn. There's another goal happening here. And it's going to happen for Kings Lynn, isn't it? Spong get there first. He does get there first. Counter-attack from the former Brighton man. Loses out to Sullivan. Loses out 20 seconds to play. And Kings Lynn are coming forward and looking dangerous. Bellis still on the pitch, still on a hat-trick. Goes towards the right. Starbuck runs past a couple of players. Lots of space crosses in. Davies is at the back post. Bellis is there. Bellis's effort is blocked. It's going to be a corner. We are over the 94. It is going to hopefully be a draw. I can't believe I'm saying that. A team bottom of the table. It's hopefully a draw. Corner comes in. It's cleared. Full-time ref, ref, referee? Referee? I mean, we're over the 95. There we go. The full-time whistle does go. It's... We should have won. 23 shots. 10 on target. They had 8 shots. 5 on target. 2-2. Two, two. Let's try and be a little bit more clinical next time, lads. It's not all doom and gloom. Obviously, we are still doing all right. Still fifth place in the table. Four points is the gap now between us and South Shields, who are now in eighth place. So it is looking like we might be dropping out. I am going to go for the next episode. Where are we going to go? What have we got? I mean, there's not a huge amount left. I feel like South Shields might be the one to go for. And maybe Bath. We might do that. So we're going to play just four matches in between episodes. Obviously, because of what I mentioned at the start of the episode about me now having a son, um, episodes might not be daily. They'll be recorded when I get the chance. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we will have an episode tomorrow, but let's wait and see, shall we? Thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy, do please remember like, subscribe to the channel as well. If you are new, stick your comments down in the comment section below. And I'll be back next time, South Shields and Bath. And hopefully we might be in a playoff spot, maybe still, probably not. See you next time.